everybody, Pastor Zach here. Thanks so much for spending some time with me this morning. May 30th, it's hard to believe that it's a almost the end of another month. Uh, thanks so much for taking this time whenever and wherever you find this. Uh, I hope that it's insightful for you and that you are uh, uplifted by it. And if you are questioned by it or confused by it, please feel free to comment or question, not just whenever you find it, but if you are joining us live, feel free to ask a question or make a comment this morning uh, as we share in this time together. I titled this uh, Going Out because uh, a couple of reasons. First of all, this past Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, which is a commissioning of the first believers of the church. They gathered together for worship. Um, they received the Holy Spirit and then got sent out. For those of you who are on, uh, there on Sunday, no, uh, we had you repeat that multiple times. And if you haven't, uh, that short video of the sermon is going to be up soon. But um, you know, feel free to look at the whole service as well. But I think it's important for us to remember this notion of going out into the world, that our faith just doesn't reside in a building. It doesn't reside in a place. It resides within us. Jesus' gospel for that day, for the day that we celebrate, says that he went and he breathed on those disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And it's this, this notion of being claimed and being sent out. Uh, they were hidden away and, and then sent out into the world. And I think it's interesting that, that we are called as well to go out into the world, um, into a world that's not easy, into a world that can be painful, can be um, full of fear, into a world that we may be uncertain of or unsure of, into a world that um, many of us might rather not go. But it's important for us to remember that we are called out, that Jesus invites us and engages us and sometimes pushes us out into the world to proclaim the grace and the love that God has for the world around us. It is a reminder that, that Jesus is, is active in our lives and active in the world. And part of that activity is through each of us, through this opportunity to connect, to be engaged, uh, to connect here online wherever you find this and whatever you find this today, but also to be enlivened by this notion of that we are called to serve the world around us. Jesus gives countless examples to his disciples, both by, by doing, but also by teaching from the Old Testament, from what they knew from the prophets from of old, about what it meant to care for the world, to care for those around them, to fulfill the law, as he said. He said he came to fulfill the law, the law not to abolish it. And that law is based on love. It's based on relationship. It's based on connecting and finding a way through. So I think it's important for us to remember all of that as we live into this understanding of what God has in store for us. And as we are called to go out, uh, some of you, a lot of you uh, have seen, uh, it's a little overwhelming to hear the, the response that I've gotten from the post that I had last week about a new position that I'm taking on as an associate to the bishop and the Northeast Pennsylvania Synod of the ELCA. Um, I, yeah, I am humbled by the, the bishop's request and by this um, new opportunity to connect with congregations and to serve with them. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it and hopefully that, that we can uh, do some amazing ministry that we are called to do together and and find ways forward. Um, and part of this too, of this going out is is part of that, is what does it mean for us to, to go out, to work with one another, to be engaged in the work that God has for us across the world, uh, that we can be uplifted and care for one another as siblings in Christ, as as those who who seek to to proclaim God and to realize that we do it imperfectly. None of us is perfect. All of us make mistakes. All of us get challenged, get lost, fall, falter, don't always do everything perfectly. None of us do. And so what does it mean to, to have that grace for one another, to be able to pick each other up, to be able to um, 
find new ways to live together differently. Um, and, and to find this understanding of, of living together. Um, this Wednesday, tomorrow, there is a soccer game. You may have seen it. I've been posting about Faith and Family Night with Reading United. Uh, I'm excited. I'm a big fan of soccer. And so this is their women's team that is playing Wednesday night, tomorrow night. Uh, kickoff is at 7. Um, and they're doing Faith and Family Night. And the neat thing about it is the team that Reading United is going against is a team that is based, um, fully supported as a ministry, which is really amazing. Um, but also Reading United uh, has players from all over the world uh, on both their men's and women's team. Uh, I was talking with with one of the owners and he's saying, you know, they have people from from the Ukraine, from um, Russia, from um, Japan, you know, from all of these. He gave me a list that, and I'm trying to remember them all. But it's it's a way that all of these young people come together around something that is they're passionate about and get to play. Um, and I just think that's really cool because it reminds us that that can happen, that we can come together in spite of everything and find a way forward. Um, yeah, they compete. Um, and we were actually at a game on Saturday night, Saturday night. Uh, that was pretty rough, but in the end, they came, they shook hands, um, and, I, and I think that's really powerful. Uh, it's a powerful reminder that, that we can be competitive. Um, we can want to win. We can want to, you know, do our best. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to do it at any cost. And, and I think allowing ourselves to, to go out, to be challenged by the world, to live in the world, um, and yet to profess a God who, at this point, goes against culture by saying, I'm going to be invitational, I'm going to be open, I'm going to be there to, to care and support and serve the world around me, um, is a powerful testament to everybody. And so I'm going to offer this to you. If you get a hold of me in the next, well, we'll say by noon, by noon today, uh, Tuesday the 30th. If you want to go to the game, let me know. I will get you tickets. We will meet as a community uh, at the gate, and then you can sit wherever you want. But if you want to go, I have discounted tickets. So if you're interested in going, let me know by noon today. If you have my email address, you can text me or call me. Um, if you have, yeah, if you have my phone number, you can do that. You can email me, you can call the church office, or you can message me on Facebook. Uh, any of those ways that, that you can reach out to me, I will be making, um, I will be getting those tickets at noon today. And so if you want to go, let me know and we will go from there. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me, wherever this finds you, whenever this finds you. And if it finds you um, at a crossroads, at a, at a time of transition, because that's the other thing that we celebrated this week was those who are graduating and uplifting them as they transition. I, I think it's important for us to remember that, that those who are going, who are in those times of transition um, are cared and supported for, whether they are certain of where they're going or whether they are unsure, um, that we are here to, to care and support and love and serve with them. So thank you all so much for spending some time with me this morning. I invite you to comment, to ask questions, to share. You can always message me with those two directly if you don't want to put them for people to see. Um, and if you have something that you would like to hear me talk about, please feel free to, to drop that as well. Um, and we can go from there. So I hope you all have a great day, an amazing day. And let me know about the soccer game and we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless.